4K video on UK load triggers. Um, so the aim of this video is to get someone who's, let's say, new to 2K to get a full understanding of how the load triggers work in this game. Um, this is not so much useful for if you want to run the game. If you want to run the game, you don't really need to know this, just follow the world record. Uh, but this is more so if you want to find your own strats, find your own skips. Uh, you probably want to know how the load triggers work. Um, so, load triggers. Obviously, we've got a fairly big map. The whole map is not loaded all at once. Which means that we're going to have load triggers. So, if we go from the temple, which is where we are now, to the cavern. Presumably, the cavern's not loaded now. So, somewhere on the way, we're going to encounter a load trigger that's going to load the cavern. Um, and actually... If I walk forward a little bit, so just watch there, right there, as I walk forward. Did you see that? It loaded. And then if I walk back, it deloads again. Let's do that. Let's show that off one more time. Loads in, and I walk back, it deloads. Okay. So there appears to be a load trigger here. But something that's very interesting about this is that this load trigger at least from a first glance appears to be directional so if I walk forward it loads and if I walk back it deloads so it kind of looks like the load trigger knows what direction I'm traveling in um, but Although it looks like that, that's not actually what's going on. Okay, so let me show you what's actually going on with this uh, beautiful diagram. So, let's say on the left here we've got, I don't know, a house. And on the right we've got some mountains or something. And let's say that they're not both loaded at the same time. So there, there appears to be, let's say here, one of these direction-based load triggers where when we walk this way, uh, the house deloads and the mountains load and when we walk this way uh, the house loads in and the mountains deload okay so that's what appears to be happening but what's actually happening is that there are two load triggers very close together so and this left one loads the left area so the house and the right one loads the right area, so the mountains. And then what's happening is, let's say we're here, and then if we walk this way, we walk past here, we've hit this load trigger, well that loads the left area, but the left area was already loaded, so it doesn't actually do anything. But then we keep walking about, let's say, another meter, and we walk through this load trigger, and that loads this area. So now the house deloads, and the mountains load in. Or conversely, if we go from the right to the left, then again, we walk past this load trigger, nothing really happens because it loads the mountains, but they were already loaded. And then we keep walking, we walk past this load trigger that deloads the mountains because it loads the left area. So that's the house. So the key takeaway here is that there's no such thing as a direction-based load trigger in this game. Um, what we have here is simply two triggers. So if I walk forward, okay, let, let, let's do that again. So I'm going to walk forward slowly until the area loads in. There we go. So around here, there's one load trigger. And then if I walk back, I'll eventually run into the other one. Yeah, here. So one one trigger is here. And the other one is here. So you can see they're about this far apart. Two load triggers. And what you'll find is that almost all the load triggers in the game, uh, not all of them, but quite a large chunk of load triggers come in pairs like that to determine uh, direction. Okay, so let's try to dig in to these two load triggers in more detail. So I'm standing on one of them now. Observe that my coordinates are 6 minus 174 minus 49 
And if I change my y coordinate from minus 174 to minus 172, I'm going to hit that load trigger, uh, the area loaded. And then if I change it back to minus 174, I hit this one again. So these are the exact coordinates of my two load triggers. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fast travel somewhere else that's going to deload the temple. And then what I want to do is I want to see what happens if we try to go back to the temple. So let's go back to where we were. It was 6 minus 172 and uh, minus 49. And oh, isn't that interesting? Nothing loaded, but I thought that's where the load trigger was. Let's try the other one. It was uh, minus 174. Oh, okay, so this one works. But the other one, which was right in front of us, it didn't work. Okay, what happens if I walk into it now? Oh, okay, so clearly there's, there's a bit more to it here than just these two load triggers. Clearly, these two load triggers behave differently in some way. So let's go over how exactly they're different and why. Okay, so I'm back in windmills again. And let's do the same thing. Let's go to that load trigger that didn't work last time. So it didn't do anything. Uh, you can see in the background there, windmills is still loaded. And then... From here, let's try minus 174 again. So this one works. So it appears that the load trigger that's currently in front of the prince is a local load trigger, whereas this one is global, i.e. if I go to this one at any point, it always loads this area, the temple. But the other one in front of me doesn't actually work at any time. It's a local load trigger. In other words, the load trigger in front of me itself needs to be loaded for it to work. So think of the load trigger like any object that needs to be loaded. Let's say that uh, plate patch over there. Um, you know, when I hit this load trigger, it loads that plate patch, but it also loads this other load trigger. Um, so that load trigger is not going to work if it's not first loaded by another load trigger. So there's a distinction between a global trigger and a local trigger. But that still doesn't explain why, after loading this area, if I go back to minus 172, it deloads everything again. What's happening here? I mean, I go back to minus 174, it loads again, and it's going to keep doing this. So what's happening? Okay, let's do another experiment. So I'm back in windmills. Uh, let's go to the temple from here once more. Okay, so I'm here. And then we're going to go to the other load trigger again, the local one, which for some reason deloads the area. And then observe that it's the windmills that's loaded again. So to my left, it's the windmills. You can see the spinning windmill over there. Um, and then actually, if I die from here, you can see we go back to windmills. Makes sense, because this is the last uh, safe zone that I stood on. Okay. Uh, but what if, before going to the temple, we went somewhere else? Um, so I happen to have the coordinates for the Warrior's Fortress memorized. So let's go there. Um, so this is, you might actually recognize this particular load trigger. This is the one that we airwalk to from City Gate in the Any% percent run. And then from here, let's go back to the temple. Okay, so we load the temple again, and then let's go to that local load trigger. 
one more time. Okay, so it deloaded the temple, but the question is, which area is going to be loaded now? Obviously, we started in the windmills, and if I died now, I haven't touched any uh, safe zone yet. If I died now, I'd go back to the windmills. But I also visited the uh, warrior's fortress. Load trigger. So, temple's not loaded. What's, what's loaded? Well, let's look left. Ah, the windmills isn't loaded. Let's look right. The warrior's fortress is loaded. So, what appears to be happening is that this local load trigger is undoing the effects of the last load trigger. And by the way, just to demonstrate, if I do die, I do go back to windmills. So, if we go back, in fact, I can do this. This is the global trigger, and then if I walk into this one, it loads windmills again. Um, so that's, that's what appears to be happening. This local load trigger, whenever I walk into it, it undoes the effects of this global trigger here. And so it loads whatever area was loaded before entering this global trigger. So if that happened to be Warrior's Fortress, it loads that. Or if that happened to be the Windows, it loads that. Um, but curiously, it, it only undoes the effects of one load trigger. So just, just, just this one. Um, but really interestingly now, if I walk into it... Oh, hang on. What's happened there? Why, why are we not loading windmills or something? So, it appears that there are certain actions that make that local load trigger go back to behaving normally again. So now, you can see if I walk forward, it, it, it loads that area at the back again. If, if I walk back, it deloads it again. So it, it's behaving normally again. Um, and actually, what happened there was because I died, um, something reset and it's behaving normally again. And th there are certain events in the game that make the local load trigger behave normally again. And so, uh, ju just to give some terminology, um, what we say when the local load trigger is behaving normally, we call it active. And when it's behaving in this strange way where it unloads the effects of the previous load trigger, we say it's semi-active. And finally, if we're just in a different area altogether and we go to this trigger and it doesn't do anything, then it's not active. So a local load trigger can be not active, semi-active, or active. And if it's, act if it's semi-active, there are a few things you can do to make it active. So one of them, as we've demonstrated, is dying. Um, there are others. Um, I, there are certain cutscenes you can trigger, certain places you can go to. It kind of varies. Um, but basically there are certain events you can trigger to make the local trigger go from semi-active to active. And in terms of what makes the trigger get to this strange semi-active point in the first place, um, it appears that that just happens when we load triggers in the wrong order, so abnormally. Um, you're never really supposed to go to this global trigger without having this local one loaded in the first place. So for whatever reason, we don't really know why it works like that, but if, you, if I go to this global trigger, it does load it does load the local trigger, but it uh, makes it semi-active. Um, whereas if we traverse the world normally, like normal people, casually, uh, then uh, local triggers would never be semi-active, in theory. Um, something I want to point out is that if you take a given global load trigger, it will always behave exactly the same regardless of the circumstances in other words whatever list of areas are associated with a global load trigger so uh, for this particular global load trigger it's this sort of 
uh, temple area, uh, the desert, um, the, the the outer door there. It just takes you just take that list of areas, and when you hit that load trigger, it will always load exactly those areas and deload everything else. Um, so in particular, this means that we don't really have a way of sort of loading two areas at once or anything like that. So, for example, we we, we don't have a way to load both the temple and the windmills uh, at the same time because there is no load trigger that loads both of those areas at once. So, if you want to load two areas, if there is a load trigger that loads both of them at once, you can do that. But if there isn't such a load trigger, then it's impossible to have both of those two areas loaded at once. So in general, if two areas are not next to each other, it's impossible to load uh, both of them at the same time. And my apologies for blinding you, but if you want to find a particular load trigger, we've actually found every single global load trigger in the game. Um, so we have this document here, it's uh, pinned on the Discord. Uh, where you can see the exact location with coordinates of every single global load trigger in the game. So if you want to uh, mess around with that, if you want to see where a global load trigger is in a given area, you can see this document. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about with regards to load triggers is how loaded areas are affected by dying. So... Obviously, you can't die in this game, but when we say that we die, what we really mean is, if I jump off, you see this Elica saving animation, we call that dying. Um, so, I died here, and then I went back to the last safe zone that I stood on. And then if I die here, um, my safe spot has updated since then. So now my safe spot is here, so I go back here. Notably, walking on a beam does not update my safe spot. So if I die now, I, I don't go back to the beam, I go to just before the beam. Okay, what does this have to do with load triggers? Well, there, there's an interesting conundrum. Because what happens if I hit a load trigger and then die? Well, le let's have a look. So you can see there's an area in the background. So just there. Uh, there are these two black vertical lines. So just have a look at those two black vertical lines. That area is not loaded. And I'm going to walk forward a little bit and load the area. Okay, so in the background just there, you can see the same two black vertical lines. They're kind of covered in sand or whatever, so clearly more detailed. It's loaded now. If I just walk back just to demonstrate again. Um, you can see it's deloaded again. Uh, so by the way, this is another global local pair of load triggers uh, where two load triggers are used to establish direction. Anyway, uh, this area is now loaded, clearly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to die. And when I die, of course, I haven't. my safe spot hasn't updated yet, so I'm going to go back there. So let's let's die and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like when we die, the area deloads again. So when we die, everything that was loaded at the last point of our safe spot updating gets loaded again. So the last time our safe spot updated, uh, whatever areas were loaded, uh, those same areas get loaded again. So notably, if we do something very slightly different this time, if we walk just a little bit further. Uh, so now our safe spot updated. And if we die again. You can see actually uh, the area doesn't deload. And just to show it off as well. Um, what I'm going to do is. So the area is loaded now. As you can see in the background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to deload it. But then I'm going to go to the side here. And by going to the side. Um, that load trigger is somewhere there, so we've actually skipped it, and you can kind of see uh, that area is deloaded now, which means if I go this way, uh, 
uh, that whole area is deloaded now. So I would actually not be able to proceed from here in theory because the area is deloaded. But just to show it off as well, if I die, that's not going to bring the area back to normal because my safe spot updated here. So when I die, it just brings back the same state as we had when my last when my safe spot updated last which is the same state nothing's changed 